guys. Thanks for coming back to Serials, a PNN webcast series that chronicles your stories. Today we are talking to Bob Nugent, a artist, a painter, and the curator for the art collection at Imagery Winery. They have a pretty unique art and wine program there, so he's going to tell us all about it. And here he is. Well, my name's Bob Nugent, and I'm a painter. Yes, the, the program at Imagery actually started about um, 23 years ago as a brand. Um, Joy Benzinger and I had met um, at uh, actually a polo match, and uh, he was um, serving wine, and we helped to break up a fight <laughs> between two guys, pulled two guys apart, and that was how we met. And uh, he was just starting his winery at the time with his brother Mike, and um, I told him I was an artist and that if they ever wanted to do an artist label, I'd be interested. I'd like to do it. And I didn't hear from them for about a year, although I, I you know, became friends and we ran into each other and so forth. But um, about a year later, they, they found a, a particular Chardonnay that they couldn't put in with the rest of their wines. They wanted to hold it out separately, so they said uh, they needed a label for that wine separately. So I said, great, I, you know, I'd love to do it. So then I started researching wine labels and seeing what had been done and how the Rothschilds had started the, you know, kind of an artist program uh, many years ago, actually in the 40s. And uh, so I, I did some research, and I found that no one had ever done a label that went across three bottles. In other words, it was a triptych. So uh, I created an image that in order to see the whole painting, you had to buy three bottles of the wine. And this was a big hit. And, of course, the wine sold three times as fast. <laughs> and the guys liked it. So they said, you know, this is a, this is a great idea. Let's, let's do this again. And that's how the whole program got started. I invited a friend of mine to do the next three labels. And uh, the, uh, the Benzingers asked me to curate the collection and to run the program. So basically, as the program is now, we commission 20 artists a year because we make 20 different wines, and each of them is unique. Most of them are single vineyard uh, wines, meaning that all the grapes come from a particular vineyard, and so they all have a uniqueness to them. And, um, and then uh, after the artists create an image, we try to match the images with, uh, with the varietal. So that's how the program gets started and uh, actually the, the point that it's at now. When the artists make the images, they don't know what wine it's going to go on. They, we, we commission artists rather than, um, you know, a fine artist, I must say, rather than design artists. And uh, designers work with the client. They adjust the label and the way that it looks and so forth uh, till they get it the way that the client would like it and, and is affecting from a market, effective from a marketing standpoint and so forth. Whereas when we invite the artists, we don't have any control over the image. We simply ask that they include this little Parthenon building in it. That's the kind of thin thread that holds the collection together. It's in every label. And um, we don't care how they use it. They can abstract it. It can be lost in a little corner or in the background somewhere. And uh, other than that, we don't have any other control over how the images are produced. Then at the end of the the year, I take all the images that I've received from the artists that we've commissioned, and Joey Benzinger and I sit down and we uh, try a Syrah wine, and we say, okay, now which, which image seems appropriate for this wine? And uh, that's how we, we decide what image goes on what, uh, what varietal. We've had photographers, sculptors. Uh, uh, we've had um, several conceptual artists, printmakers, the whole gamut. When we started the collection, I felt it was very important that all aspects of uh, not only in terms of the, you know, the styles, but in terms of media, that all of them were represented in the collection. So when we go looking for artists, it doesn't make any difference whether a sculptor or a printmaker or a painter. Um, we, we consider everything as, uh, as possible. Most of them I go after. In other words, I see them. Um, I've been an artist for 35 years, and I do a lot of traveling for my own shows. Um, I'm in South America three or four times a year. I'm, I spend a lot of time uh, traveling around the United States and in Europe. 
And as I see artists that I think uh, the work is exciting or interesting to me, if it has some special quality to it, then I remember that name and I research them and see uh, what the rest of their work looks like. And then uh, we invite them. Uh, so most of the artists are selected by me uh, in in my travels or, um, you know, if I see it through the media or something of that kind. We also uh, have unsolicited, we received, uh, received two or three sets of slides or um, discs of images uh, each week from artists who have become aware of the program, have, been, have visited the winery or one way or another have learned about uh, imagery. And we review all those materials, too, and we, on occasion, select artists from, from those submissions. There, there is a public that drinks fine wine, and there is a public that produces, um, uh, that, that pursues fine art. And I think it's the same people. And I think that that's why the things go so well together, that um, the people that are interested in that... Um, you know, there, there, there are movements, um, a younger generation now, and my assistant, I think, is, is part of this a generation, you call the slow movement. It's a back to uh, a, a kind of basic preparation. Um, they take the time with things. It's, uh, it's, uh, they're not, everything's not coming from frozen foods and so forth. In other words, there's a, there's a time element that's involved in, in producing um, you know, in producing the meals. And that's what I like about cooking is uh, I don't want to queeze an art because I don't want something to do all the chopping for me. I want to do the chopping. And when, and when art is made, it's a, it's a time thing. It's a time element. It's something that, that happens over a period of time. And the same is true with wine, that fine wines are made over a period of time, you know, that, that they don't really become ready, so to speak, for two, three, four years, uh, some much longer than that. And I think there's somehow a connection between all those things. And the people that appreciate this, the slow food, uh, there is a, a group of artists now that we, we've kind of categorized as saying they're part of the slow movement. And these are artists that spend thousands of hours on one drawing. They will, we will, they will work it and, and detail it and... and uh, there is an appreciation, I think, for that kind of thing, um, not only within the artist community, but I think within the public in general. So those people who, who enjoy eating and spending three hours uh, uh, eating a meal and uh, drinking a, you know, a, a very good wine are also the people that appreciate um, fine art and the time it takes to do it. Uh, I think it's the same group. I think it's the same people. So that wraps up cereals today for us. Uh, be sure to check back next time when we'll be talking to my friend Clara. She's an international child extraordinaire, and she has lots of fun stuff to tell us about. So we'll see you then. Bye. <laughs>